call this meeting to order pursuant to the Texas Open Meeting Act. This is a special called workshop meeting of the Commissioner's Court. Today is Thursday, June the 17th. It's 9 a.m. in the Central Jew Room of the Hood County Justice Center, 1200 West Pearl Street, Granbury, Texas. Purpose of this workshop here today is to meet with the Hood County Human Resource Director, Ms. Melissa Welburn, to receive updates and discuss the 2021, 2021-2022 uh, employee medical and vision benefits. No action will be taken at this workshop as it is an informational workshop only. And we have today a representative from TAC also here to help Ms. Welburn. We look forward to her input. Good morning, Ms. Welburn. Good morning, thank you. The reason I asked for this workshop is to hopefully answer any questions you may have as a group. Um, I met with the majority of the court one-on-one. -on -one. I could tell there was still a lot of questions about the renewal, and so hopefully we can answer the majority of those questions this morning. I do have action on the uh, June 22nd agenda to renew our plan, so hopefully we can get everything hashed out today. I'll be available Friday and Monday before the court on Tuesday to answer any questions one-on-one. -on -one. But I did ask Kathy Davenport, she is my TAC rep for our um, health renewal, and to attend today to hopefully answer any questions that I cannot answer. You received a packet with our renewal information in there uh, probably about three weeks ago. I'm assuming everybody's at least had a chance to look at it. If you don't have it with you, I do have copies. And also, I wanted to provide you with um, another, uh, some information I pulled off the internet. <coughs> This is information about a health reimbursement agreement. So this would be an agreement between the county and the employee. This could possibly be used if you chose a different option besides the renewal that we're currently at. Again, this is all just information for you to consider but I want to make sure that hopefully you know all options, you understand them, and then you feel good about whichever option you choose, hopefully on Tuesday. So I'm here to answer any questions, and if I cannot, I think Ms. Davenport can. Okay, hey, well, you know, the options that we have is that personally for me, I think what we have right now is we have a $2,000 uh, deductible, correct? Correct. And that uh, the out-of-pocket that you have to pay an employee of the county, like me, like anybody here, would have to pay is an additional $4,000 to get 100% coverage, correct? That is correct. Once you meet your $2,000 deductible, then you still have to meet the 20% of the 100% charge. And that's, of course, if you stay in your PPO. Anytime you may veer out of from under the PPO and you have a procedure or you go to a doctor that is not in our PPO, you could possibly be out more than even the $6,000, depending on how well you stay within our PPO. You know, one of the pitches I give to all new employees when they come to benefit orientation is it's up to us as the patient and the employee to try to keep our costs down. We are what drives our plan. Um, I'm sure you noticed that we do have a 9.5% increase this year. We do have some costly claims, which also helps drive that. So. Again, it's up to us to try to find those cheaper procedures, shop around. We have a website that allows employees to log in. They can look at all doctors that are included in our plan under the PPO. They can shop around for that cheapest MRI. Unfortunately, there's times when an employee can go pay cash 
for some type of service as an MRI, and it's cheaper than filing it on their insurance. A lucrative plan is no longer available as far as health care goes. We are going to be faced with rising costs, I believe, from here on out. You know, I can remember when my children were small, we went to the doctor all the time because it was free almost. We didn't pay anything for our plan back then. It was cheap to have insurance. And as the consumer, I didn't think what I might be doing to our plan across the country long term. And so I think things like that, I'm just as guilty of the reason why our health care is in the situation it's in today. But I don't believe it's going to get better. And so as the employee, as the patient, it's up to us to try to keep our costs down. So again, back to the $2,000 deductible, yes, if you have to have any type of major procedure, you're going to meet that deductible. Then if it's anything above that, you still got to meet 20% additional 4000 So you could be out $6,000 if you're looking at any type of major procedure. And that's with the current plan. And I see our treasurer here who's shaking her head. Oh, no, I, only because I had to go through that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I had hurt my shoulder the other day, and when I went to see Melissa, when we came up, I couldn't even raise my arm to a 90 degree. Fortunately, when they told me how much it was going to cost, the miracle of prayer does something. <laughs> and so I've got full range of movement and no pain now. I still don't have the strength. But, you know, that I just said, you know, I, I, an employee just that is just a lot of money, an extra $6,000 to come up with, and I just want to keep it no more than that. I want to see if we can keep it. We've had that plan. It's never going to get any cheaper, that's for sure. I don't but believe it will. It will. But to try to come up with some plan to at least keep it at the maximum of $6,000, because I guess you could get one of those outrageous credit cards and put it on that and then pay it out. You know, that's what America's going to have to do. But uh. And we do offer a flex spending account for all employees. That is an option. You can, right now, the max is twenty-seven fifty that you can put on that plan or that card. What I tell employees is if you know, and of course not everybody knows if something's going to come up, but if you know you have to have some type of procedure, be it dental, vision, um, medical, prescription, Take out this FSA because it's kind of like an interest-free loan. You get that money up front right after October 1, and you have all year to pay it back to the county. That is something that the county offers to the employee. I have been told that there is a possibility that the flex spending account will start rolling over. Now, nothing has been set in stone, so I can't promise you anything about that this morning. If I could, I think it would make a huge difference in what we even considered as far as our renewal goes, but unfortunately I can't. I, but I have been told that that's being considered, and that would be beneficial to our employees because they could put the max on there, pay it out, and it continues to roll over. Where right now, you have to spend it down to $500 before, when it rolls over, or you're gonna lose that money, anything above the 500. That's currently the way the FSA is set up. Yeah, frankly, I'd like to get my hands on the idiot that came up with that. If you put the money in there, it ought to roll over. And I agree. It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And I believe that is one of the things that is being considered. I don't know if it's part of the ARPA plan that they put out, but it is being considered that you don't lose any of the money and it continues to roll over. And I wish I knew for sure, but at this time, it's not been set. I agree with it you. It is cheats to... Yeah. <laughs> well, that comes back to the county. Oh, it comes back. It does. Because we, you, the court, you're more or less the host of that plan. And so uh, it's kind of a two-edged sword in the sense of if an employee leaves and they have received an FSA and they spend all that money, we can't collect that money from them once they separate from the county. So we could either see a gain or we could see a loss. So 
that's the way that works. But I do believe it's a good plan for our folks for the most part. I, mean, I still think 100% it's a good thing to offer. So the, if, correct me if I'm wrong here, but the current plan, when I'm just talking about numbers right mm -hmm. now. And you're looking at this page with the yellow highlight? Well, no, I'm looking at the, I mean, I can look at that page. Okay, no, I'm sir, I'm, at, I'm good with looking at I'm looking at the next page, the one that's this okay. one. Sure, yes, sir. Uh, so as far as the numbers are concerned, option two gets us closest to where we are now money-wise. As far as renewal, yes. And everything's The cost pretty, for the yeah, county. And nearly everything's pretty similar except the deductible. That is correct. The deductible goes up $1,000. That's 000. what changes. Yes. Now, that may be where you also find this beneficial for our employees. But again, it's a court decision. And it's the health reimbursement agreement. Is that the, like the flex deal? Not really, because it would only be reimbursed to the employees who meet anything above the already $2,000 deductible. One of the things I wanted to propose is if you did go with option two, currently our deductible is $2,000. If you went with option two and, we just, and the court approved the HRA, then the county would reimburse an employee if they met anything above the 2000 Now, that's an option. Also, your um, out-of-pocket expense goes up $150. So you're looking at a total out-of-pocket of, of $7,150 with option two. Only reimburse a thousand. Correct. Yeah. A little over, probably a quarter of our employees meet that deductible. So to keep the current plan, so going back to the one with the yellow highlights. Yes, you sir. Got, you got some totals on there. I do. So we're looking at going up uh, two hundred and fifty thousand to stay with the same plan we got now? It'd be 257616 And then 77400 if we go to option two. That's correct. Either and way, it's going up. It's going up, yes, you're correct. Um, my recommendation would be also in the auditor, and I have discussed this, that you would, if you went with the HRA, if you chose option two, you would still need to budget a little bit for that. So approximately, I would recommend maybe uh, considering half of our employees might have to meet that deductible. I think that's a high number, but we would never want to under budget that if you chose to go with the HRA. So let me, can I summarize what I think I hear, and you can tell me if I'm wrong. Yes, sir. If we go to option two and then we set aside an account to cover the difference between the $2,000 deductible and say the and the $3,000 deductible, they're still getting, when you get past the deductible, the employee's still getting the same benefits pretty much. Pretty much, except for your copay is going to go up $5 and your specialist copay goes up 15 so you got a hundred eighty thousand dollar difference. Well, so these are numbers we just need to crunch and kind of. But the HRA would be the county setting aside an account and putting money in it, earmarking some money, and then if the employee goes over the two thousand dollar deductible, the county can kick in the difference. Is that what I'm hearing? That is correct. Yes. Um, and I at did. the end of the year, if we went over, we have to we'll have to do a line item transfer or something. But if we go under. Then it's money saved. Yeah, okay. Yes. I've done a lot of thinking about that. I think it's, it's doable. I've talked to quite a few counties who offer this, and they said it has worked flawless for them. The, the, the HRA? Yes. Um, the only thing I caution the court about is in the future, if you decide, or whomever is setting up there decides, we can't fund our current plan and also offer the reimbursement, 
just be aware that you could get beat up on Facebook or social media in general if we quit offering that reimbursement because we probably would be looking at an increase in the deductible and also the court saying, sorry, we can't reimburse you anymore. You're going to be meeting that $4,000 deductible or whatever it may be. So I just want you to be aware of that, that in the future, if you ever decided to quit offering the HRA, you could have an issue as far as people being upset. And I just want you to be aware of that. Well, they're going to be upset about the increase in cost <laughs> anyway. Yes, they will. It. And I want to do. It's all judge's fault. We'll just blame him. Let's beat <laughs> him up. I want to do what's best for our folks, too, yeah. in the sense. And I think the HRA would be hopefully a good way to um, help the employee that has to meet that $3,000 deductible if you chose to go with option two. Well, and it's cheaper. I mean, the $180,000, that's. Let, let me ask you. You'd have to have 180 employees. Max that's right into that to make up that is correct and, that. and I don't think we would see that right as a that's, county yeah yeah so seems. let's just take this let's just continue this discussion just for grins what if we did the HR did the HR I mean could we do the HRA and even cover a little more if we wanted to or yes it? yeah you can yeah that's entirely up to the court so we could do option two do the HRA and arguably cover over, if, the, if they got over 1,800, let's say, cover the 200. I don't think there's anything legal that would prevent us from doing that. I thought I seen Matt. Because it isn't <laughs> informal HRA. This is Why don't you come up and speak okay. at a microphone so we can have a record of it. Thank you. Um, because it is an informal HRA, this is just a, an agreement that you are making. <clears throat> with your employees um no there's there's really not um a, a limit on what you can reimburse uh so i mean that would just be between you and the employee so how many employees typically in the last three years have maxed have had to max out their deductibles out of 300. i would say no more than a quarter mm -mm. over the past three years well, I mean, because when you hit, when you max your deductible out, you're, you're pretty much, you know. If someone in the household is ill, if you have family coverage, that's correct. And I was going to say, just because you max that two thousand out doesn't necessarily mean that you hit the, hit the limit on the three thousand right. either. Total I mean, you may end up twenty two fifty or something. So that's correct. That, uh, What's the max out of pocket with a new one? Like now, if you got fifty, if you're going to talk, you need to talk up here so that they, no, no, I want you to go ahead and I want your input, yes. but we need to hear it so that yes. the employees. Yeah, because all, all that here is. Yeah, definitely, because that's what this is about is, and that's why I asked the auditor and the treasurer to be here is because it does, it affects all of us. Uh, if you did go with the HRA, we would receive a report from TAC no information except for employee name and the amount that they have met towards the deductible, then I would process something through the auditor's office, but then it would be the auditor that cuts the check to the employee. Uh, Becky perked up on that one. We, we're, we're going to have to figure out how to do that because I don't know if that's taxable income or not. It's not. I've already checked on it. It doesn't go so through Leanne payroll. So I would have to figure out how to pay them without it taking out for retirement and... It would have to go through you. Yeah, I don't think it goes through payroll. Just directly to the employee? It would. A but again, mm -hmm. when you run your 1099, where's Glenn? He's not here. I told him he didn't need to be here. Silly me. There, we just have to make sure because when you run payroll and you give them their information at the end of the year, mm -hmm. it will add to that. Okay. So we have to figure out a different way to do it. Okay. All the counties that I've spoke to, they run it through the audit office. It does not go through payroll because it is a reimbursement. It's Correct. not and, taxable. And that's perfect. But when you get to... Sure, I understand pay, what you're pay, saying. Pay yes. pay over $600 a year on a 1099, it's taxable. Yeah. No, so I understand. Figure that out. Well, I don't think that 
you know, one the first year when we, or last year or 2019 when we were doing this, I know when we were thinking about increasing the deductible from when it was 1,500 to two. To the present 2000. It was that 600 was, to 2000, and it was it was a rude that. awakening that for was a our rude folks. Rude awakening to the people. <laughs> they just said, and there's Dee Dee back there shaking her head. Yes, I mean yeah. they just can't do that. I just would like to try to keep. And uh, you know, it's not so much that that employee may ever have to meet that deductible, yeah. but it's the thought of it. Yeah. And when they hear that, it. It hits them hard, and so yes, there was a lot of employees who were devastated and never even met the 600, much less the 2,000. But nonetheless, the thought of it is—it's overwhelming. Really daunting, really a daunting situation here. So I, I kind of like it. Just they're kind of where we, we all accustomed to the $2,000, and if we had the reimbursement plan. It's like we're all saying, you may not hit, you may not have to be reimbursed the full. It's maybe only 25%, and out of the 25%, they may only use $150 or $250 or 550 And that's correct. And, and then, then something else reimbursed. you need to think about is if it's an employee with a family plan, you know, they don't, are they only going to get that $1,000 reimbursement no matter whom in the household has had to meet that deductible, keep that in mind too, you know, that that could be an issue. Um, also, TAC has recommended a um, plan that we would require employees, and we, uh, Kathy has a handout for you. Employees would be asked to go get their wellness check. It's free. Our plan offers that free. You don't even have to pay the copay. What we would do is implement that during open enrollment. We would stress to our employees, which I do anyway, but we would tell them, you have to go get your well check. And if you don't, by July of 2022, then we're going to charge you $50 a month, starting with the new plan year of 2022, 2023. You get charged $50 a month because you did not go get your wellness check. We're just trying to prompt our employees to take better care of themselves and take advantage of the free things that are offered to help their health. Again, that's an option. It's not a requirement. But TAC has been asking me to talk about that for about two or three years now. And last year, my I got the jest that the court was not for it. So again, it's just something for you to consider. It doesn't have to be implemented, but I wanted you to be aware that that is a possibility of possibly helping our employees get on board with going and getting their well check. All right, I've got it. You brought up something a minute ago that I'd forgotten about. So the, the deductible is per individual in your household? It is, up to a certain amount. And if you'll flip over to that page that... Commissioner Eagle was just talking about, you'll see the family deductible, how it falls in network, out of network, coinsurance maximum. Is that correct, Kathy? Am I telling them right? Okay. So yes, if you have a family plan, you do have to meet more than just the $2,000. How much more? I mean, you know, some people will cover it like if you have one child or four children, the premium does not go much. No, the, it doesn't affect the premium, no matter okay. how many dependents you have on there, right. there as far as children goes. All right, what about the deductible from the children? For an employee that is covering family, whether it be spouse or dependents, that family deductible can be met by the employee or the spouse. Just it can be, it has to be at least two people that is meeting that family deductible. Which is four thousand? Uh, yes, I believe okay. so. I think so. Whatever uh, the minimum, whatever the right times and it, two. And it could be three people. 
that is meeting that family deductible. As long as there is more than just the employee meeting that family deductible, it's met. Okay, so that changes uh, the math on the, the HSA if we do include family in that because now you're not just talking about 300 employees, but you're talking about 300 employees plus their family? Well, it, you're only still going to talk... I assume you're still just going to talk about the 1000 or up to $1,000 per employee. So your math is going to stay the same. Just that employee could possibly have to meet more of a deductible than what they've met in the past if they have family coverage. So what is the family coverage right now? Thank you. You, you get the you under, you know. Yeah. It's 4000 maybe the deductible but they're still only going to get reimbursed a thousand for the employee that is correct right yeah or whomever in their household 3, yeah what I'm trying to well but I think that the, the 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 cost of the plan does that family deductible change with the different options I guess that's it does. yes okay it does so it's I assume that the the uh, Number one, well, not option one, but the, the as we have it renewal. now, uh -huh. yes, the, that uh, then your family deductible would be less with that than it would with option two. So to say that we're there's a hundred eighty thousand difference, that's only a hundred eighty thousand employees. Do you see what I'm saying? Because you're you're giving the family more coverage with staying where we are now, because. As far as deductible goes, yes. is that yeah, what you're talking yeah, about? Yes. yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Staying with the current plan keeps that deductible lower. You're right. And so if you so go with option two, it is a higher deductible if you have dependents or family coverage. Yeah. The impact or on spouse. the employee. The, the, the impact on the employee could be. That is could correct. Could be higher. And so that's okay. Yes. So what's the breakdown in the county on the. And maybe it's here and I just didn't see it about it. how many don't have a family plan versus how many just in, insure themselves. I don't have the exact numbers. We do have quite a few employees who carry dependents. We do not have a lot that has family coverage. Family coverage is expensive. And spousal coverage is expensive. Um, I would say less than a quarter has family or spouse coverage, and maybe a little more. And I can get you those numbers. Okay, but, that would be helpful. Uh, uh, maybe a little more than a quarter does have dependent coverage as far as children. What do they do then? Well, let me ask you this: What does the employee that has a spouse and three young children? If the it would be nice if the spouse had a job that I don't know well, well first of all I don't know too many medical plans now that would cover dependents that pays for everything do y'all I mean that that's what I'm saying so it's just a bunch of people that just doesn't have coverage then I guess right that's correct if they can't find coverage or the spouse doesn't work elsewhere and is offered coverage there, then they will pick them up and put them on our plan. A lot of times employees will go out and search on the market for something cheaper for the family. I'll be honest, they come back and say there's nothing out there that compares to our plan and that's the truth, not for what it costs because we do offer a very nice plan. and. Yes, it is expensive, but if you go out on the open market and look for something comparable to what we offer, you can't afford well, it. You're going to be, you may be looking at seven, eight thousand, ten thousand dollar deductible for basically, unless you're in a catastrophic event. Uh, that is that's, correct. That's about all you can do because I've been there and I understand that. Yeah. We've had a few new em employees come on board over the past year and they are very excited when they see the plan that we offer because of what they came in from and so they're very grateful. Can I just touch back on the reimbursement thing? When you talk to the other counties, how did they deal with the 1099s and being taxable income after that? It's not taxable income, so I'll have to check on how the 1099s because are handled. Because once we, like Becky was saying, once we hit that mark, they're going to start they have to send that to the IRS. Okay. And that could throw our employees 
Yeah, not and, in a good space. and that would not be a plan for us if that's the case. Right. But from what I gathered yesterday, because I talked to about four different counties, that was not an issue. Okay. And that's one of the reasons it doesn't get ran through payroll. So there may be another option as far as what's ran at the end of the year. If you have a county in particular that does this and it works well, if you could just have them call one of us. Sure. So we can go over how they manage this at the end of the year. Because I know enough to know that when you pay someone over $600, regardless of how you do it, it's going to be taxable income. Okay. There's still a vendor. There's still a vendor. And it still will print a 1099, which is goes to the IRS, which they would pay taxes. And that, that is money. addressed in this handout as far as it not being taxable income, but how it's handled, it doesn't go into that. So I will find out. Thank you. Well, are we all kind of in agreement that we want to try to work something out that the employees will not have to pay more than the two thousand dollar deductible, and and then have meet the twenty percent with the additional four thousand. So if you had to have surgery, then you have to. It's you're going to be out six thousand dollars. More than likely, yes, and possibly and then, more, depending on whether you stay in a PPO and what type of services. Right. Yeah. But a minimum of that, if you're going to have a surgery, that's going to cost. Any amount of money. That's right. So I think what we want to do, don't we, is to try to work out something that can keep it like that and don't try to increase it, other than if we can do the reimbursement, mm -hmm. take it up to 3000 but let them know that the county will reimburse the additional 1000 Yes, or up to up the 1000 yes. Up to 1000 Correct. That is an option, yes. What do y'all think? I mean, you're the auditor and, and everybody up here. I mean, that's what we got to try to do. And everything is going up, so uh, some adjustments going to have to be made. I mean. I believe so. Over the next few years, I think we're going to see maybe not this type of increase, but I don't think it's ever going to be a flat renewal or a decrease by any means. Um, again, health care is not headed in a good direction, unfortunately. Well, it never, it never has been. So, no. I mean, this is, this, is, this is just the same verse, different, you know, next year. It is, it is. But the court has, ever since I've worked for Hood County, done a great job of offering a great plan, and I, I know our folks are very grateful for that. I know it shocked me when I knew that, I just thought I had to pay $2,000 and go ahead and <laughs> cut me up, you know? But then I'm, it's another four, so that was $6,000. That's correct, and I do try to stress that to our employees yeah. during open enrollment, that. So don't we, don't just get set on that two thousand because yeah. you could, depending on what the situation is, you could be out an additional four. And I, I'm I'm inclined to look seriously at this HRA situation and the other options. That's why I need, we need I to asked, crunch the numbers. And yeah. Because at the end of the day, the employee just wants to not see changes, and uh, I understand that. So this plan is about seventy-seven thousand dollars more. Correct. Option two. Option yes. two. Then we would probably book seventy-five thousand more because if a, if a quarter of the people, which is seventy-five people, have to hit that mark, then we would budget about one hundred eighty thousand instead of two hundred fifty thousand. Correct. And you and I, and of course the court would need to know too for sure, but that would be part of the budget process. Yeah. See, if the initial numbers were hit by that's something that's doable and it's not a real shock to the system of any employee and they're still getting what they have been getting for the last As year. far as the deductible, now they're right. going to see an increase in copay. And the copay, but it's, you know, that copay is just re increasing it $5. $5. And you know, I really in stress to our employees, MD Live is out there and right now it's free. A virtual meeting or just a phone call with a doctor. 
And at the moment, you can talk to a doctor for free if you do the virtual meeting. Um, even if it's not free, they only charge $10. I just can't recommend it enough because I've utilized it twice to stay out of the urgent care and it's been great. So, you know, if I can really get, drill that home to our folks, stay out of the doctor's office in urgent care, utilize MD Live when you can, <clears throat> you know, if, that, if your nose is running or your finger hurts, do the virtual meeting and stay out of the urgent care or the doctor's office because that is costly to the plan. So, and plus, you're going to possibly see an increase in your copay if we go with option two. So those are options for our employees. And it's up to me to stress that and make sure that they continually remember that. You know, I got a call the other day from an employee, and they were trying to get in to see the doctor. And doctor couldn't see them until two days later. And I said, do the virtual doctor. I said, you can do that for free. Oh, I forgot about that. So, you know, it's, it's hard to keep that in mind, but um, I do stress that to our employees. And this would be, that would be helpful to them as far as if y'all went with option two. Dee, you're back there shaking your head. Come on up here and tell us what you think. No, do. That's what this Come. is about. Dee, Dee? Yeah. <clears throat> Come on. You have, you have some experience with that, don't you? Me. Come on up if so you're we can hear. Increasing my we, pay, but you're increasing my app, app pay. Then how is that good for me? Did you understand her question? I did. What she's asking is, if you're asking employees to possibly pay a little more for their deductible or their copay, but you're not increasing the employee's pay, then how does that equal out fair? Well, it, it doesn't equal out fair, but it's not the county's fault. It's the if insurance you fault. An option will we pay more than it does? Do what? What she's saying is, if you ever chose an option where the deductible went up and that employee had to meet a higher deductible, yet their pay was not increased, then that would be. That would not be a benefit for the employee who had to meet that She's deductible. Not talking, you're not talking about deductible because we're, we're talking about leaving the deductible where it is. So what are you talking about? If you go with that option, you're going to increase the copay, which means I have to pay more when I go to the doctor or when I see a doctor. So She's talking about the $5 increase five, for that's copay. A $5 increase. Not five, I mean, and then more for a prescription or more for... No, prescriptions stay the same. Deductible everything stays else the stays same. the same. Yeah, everything else there stays the same. Yeah, welcome to the real world. That's the way it is, Addy. I don't have those numbers. There's no way for me to know. It just affects the employees. That's, I mean. Yeah, this only affects employees who participate in our plan. I mean, if you waive it or. Yeah, if you waive it, then this does not affect them, nor would the HRA affect them. <coughs> well, obviously, we got some more research to do, don't we? <laughs> so, what, when do we, when is does a decision have to be made? This is required on June thirtieth. Now. Not today, but... No, sir, no. Um, like I said, it is on the agenda for Tuesday. The court can pull it, and we can uh, schedule a uh, special meeting. Mm -hmm. And I'm available all day tomorrow and all day Monday. Well, I think we need to check with, to make sure how that works as far as the reimbursement of the employee. Sir, with the yeah, we can work that out. Yeah. Whatever it is, we can do that. But also, that's what I'm for. I have budgeted the full amount yeah. right now. But Dee Dee, to answer your question, it's never going to just remain the same. They're, they're, we're in the changes, you know. And so, but it's it's easier to meet but a five. But like she said, if you go away from the plan that you currently have and do something else, if you decide to go back, then it's going to be a lot. 
you're talking about a change in the deductible then. We're not, we're not steering away from our current plan. Everything would stay the same as far as the plan goes. But yes, there could be, in the future, there could be an increase in deductible. I, I don't ever deny that. Uh, it changes I mean, every year. I it mean, does. And yeah. I tell all employees, it's like car insurance. What do you do to keep your premiums down? You raise your deductible. And the same thing with health insurance, house insurance. And don't get tickets. Yeah. Of course, you know, if an employee's sick, I would never, ever recommend they not go to the doctor or the ER, but I do try to explain to the employee what's most expensive to them is also more expensive to our plan. And from, like I said from the very beginning, it's up to us as the patient to keep, try to keep those costs down because, again, we're looking at a 9.5% increase this year. When did you say we have to make a decision? It has to be entered on June 30th. June 30th. With TAC. So I would just ask that you let us do the research to figure out what the back end on the re reimbursement is before. So I guess it's going to be in the next quarter. It's on Tuesday's okay. agenda. So yeah, okay. we've still got four days to yeah, look at this. Days. And yeah, um, yeah. but I've been looking at it. We're going to find that out before you guys make a decision for sure. And that'll be easy to find that out. Well, it's, actually, there's no, yeah, okay. We just got to. Y'all have the hard part. Got more homework to do. Well, and, and with the. I just want to make sure that you have it before you make a decision. Uh, I, uh, yeah, that'd be great. And I think goal, with the. <clears throat> we all have the same goal here. I think to so. To try to keep the coverage the same without increasing the cost to the employee anymore. It's costing the county more. Dee Dee, you're sitting back there smiling. It's costing almost 10% more. It's got to come from someplace. So we're trying to make it as reasonable as we can, but we just can't, you know, write the check like on everything else. It's car insurance for all the cars that we got and everything else. Um, well, and to put this in tax terms, you're looking at if we keep the, and this is just a kind of a rough estimate, but if we keep the same plan, we're talking about a half a cent tax because you're looking at uh, going uh, almost 200 and, well, 257616 dollar difference. That's a half a cent tax on the taxpayer. If you want to put it in those terms, about right, yes. Miss Kidd? So we're asking the taxpayers to pay another half cent to leave it where it is. And the HSA, if if we do the, the HRA thing, health H reimbursement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I don't but want the, to get confused with right, an HSA. I, I think I'm mixing up the <laughs> FSA or whatever. So um, that causes some of us to yeah. <laughs> cringe. <laughs> <laughs> so if we did include families on that, basically we're at risk for about six hundred thousand dollars for, for two thousand for each employee, three hundred employees. Oh, it doesn't go to the family. It's it, no, no, it, no, 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 no. It, 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 the the <clears throat> the current insurance does cover that protection for the family or for spouses or for and it still would whatever it would be what the court decided they were going to reimburse right but but to to, to replace what we have now you're at risk two thousand dollars per employee with the families correct or family or dependent as far as reimbursement no, no. With what we have with the right deductible, now, your family deductible right now is, is higher 4, than 000. the two thousand. Correct. Right. It's four thousand. Am I getting that right? Okay. Yes. So it's four thousand. So with the current plan, it stays at four thousand. If we change it, it goes to six. The family deductible will go up. Yes. Yes, because it's 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 per person or whatever. So. If you had all 300 employees that had dependents or spouses or whatever, then that puts the county at risk 
of $600,000 in payout potentially if you cover the family and the individual. If you did the reimbursement for family, yes, yes. yes. you could, you would see a higher payout, but right. that's up to the court. Well, and, and I think to compare apples to apples, we have to take that into consideration because that that really fully replaces the plan that we have now. Okay. Is to put us at six hundred thousand. But we've only got twenty percent or twenty five percent that have the family. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some there's some twisting, uh, you know. Yeah, because a lot of people are just the individuals and not the families are dependent. Most so, of our employees. So yes, yeah, it's that's just the that just employee changes coverage. That math or whatever a little bit because looking at it like. You know, uh, we're only going to have a quarter of the people pay that extra thousand dollars or whatever. Well, obviously the math is easy, but I don't think that's that's bringing all the variables into play. And there's some. It some would other change if you included yeah. dependents, yeah. spouse, or family. Yes. Employee reimbursing the employee just that amount. I mean. You know, I mean, how far are you going to ask the county to go to try to do the reimbursement for the county? I mean, when you and I were talking mm -hmm. about it, unless we were talking about reimbursing the, the county employee and not the family. I know it's still a hit to the county employee, and I get your point, but, uh, you know. It's yeah, is it, is it the taxpayer's responsibility, in other words? Well, right. I'm just saying to look at these two, uh, it, 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 you have to factor that into that $180,000 difference. And I'm sure, you know, of course I've got <laughs> people, bean counters, sitting there figuring these things out. And I, but Well, at that point, you just stay with what you have if, if that's something that you wanted to do. If you wanted to reimburse 2000 per family that met that deductible, at that point you wouldn't have much difference. Uh, yeah, I agree. But I think that it's, I think it was a slam dunk whenever we walked in here and said it's $180,000 difference. We're probably looking at, you know, maybe depending on, yes, what the court decided. Using it, so we're, you know, that's 100000 as opposed but to 180000 But it's not 180000 difference. It's not. That's, that's, that's the other part of it. It's $77,000 over what we're paying now, plus you're going to bank 75000 for employees that get the 1000 back. So it's not 180. Well, I think what he's saying. It's 80. If I'm following, so if we stay with the plan right now, we're looking at $257,000 difference. Correct. And to, to have everything equal, the same. Yes, sir. And if we went with option two, which is 77,000 more, and we bank the difference, it would be earmarking the same amount of money, but it would be us this is just we're talking hypotheticals here that's correct that's all this we're is we're not talking you know we're just nope. hypothesizing that's exactly right and we and we earmark the same amount as just to keep it where it is but put the difference earmarked in an account to reimburse we're basically betting that we don't have to spend all that that's exactly right to, to put it into in like, any way shape or form and i still think what melissa's talking about is is a good plan except for probably families and we've only, we're only looking at us, and I and I urge we need to look at the real world out there. What are, what's what are, you know what's available out there in the real world too? Well, I'd be curious to know how many counties actually fully cover all their their employees' health insurance. That's a like we do. That's a huge benefit. Yeah, in general, it is. And a lot of counties I talk to, they don't. Employees are required to pay a portion of their premium. Give a raise, give a lesser raise to help offset this so that they don't have to have any changes. That's entirely up to the court. You're assuming everybody takes the plan. I'm sorry? So you're assuming everybody takes the plan. I'm not. No, not everyone takes the plan. We do have employees that waive our plan. And that's why we base this off of approximately 300 employees. And very seldom probably do we pay monthly on 300 employees because we're never fully staffed. Well, can we, can we get a spreadsheet with those numbers? Who, who's on the plan, who's on the family, who's not on? Well, I can give you, yes, numbers of who participate. Now, with that being said, that's always give or take every month because there's departments that are exactly. never fully well, staffed. Yeah, I get that. So that's why we do an average of 300. Um, sure, I can get you numbers of those who waive it. 
but I would never steer away, I don't think, from the 300. Okay. Just to be on the safe side. We would never want to under budget because we have, that plan. Don't we have about 340 full-time employees right now? Something close to that? Is that right, Leanne? Uh, okay. 375 total. I don't know how many part-time. Okay. So that tells you an estimate of how many might waive it. What we need is just a spreadsheet just to talk about really what it would cost and what we have to plan on that option two. I'd like to see the hard numbers on option two because that's where I think in hypothetically speaking we that have an insurance ended spreadsheet up going because I think that's shows the all best that thing does it? Yes. for the okay. county employee. We keep a spreadsheet on it and it shows for the best thing for the employee spouse we have a spreadsheet mm -hmm. on that and we keep a spreadsheet also in our office but I, I'm sure TAC could come up with more concrete numbers in the sense of um, family spouse dependent we have that Melissa in our okay. office we update that monthly when we reconcile right. the insurance payment through the treasurer's mm -hmm. office we just we've been auditing that for years okay. to make sure it's not underpaid well. or overpaid did they forget an employee did they forget to bill us an employee who's going to get billed next week. We, we audit that every month. Okay. Yep. So we have a real up-to-date. So yes, I can get you those numbers as far as who has family coverage, spousal coverage, dependent coverage. That would be helpful. Thank okay. you. Do you have anything to add to what we're saying? If you see anything that you think that we need to be aware of that we have overlooked in our discussions here no sir no, I really don't because uh, Melissa and I have talked for for a couple of weeks on this um, and she had already told me that she had been meeting with with the auditor and treasurer so they've got a good sense going um, our concern and I, I used to be a county treasurer for Fisher County, and we did this for a while. We ran into the issue of we were only, whenever we were doing our budget, we weren't budgeting for a good portion of our employees to meet their deductible because it was the same thing. We, For years, we only had a quarter of the employees who met the deductible. Um, and then we had a couple of really bad years back to back and it seemed like every person who was on the plan was submitting a reimbursement request because they had gone over their original deductible to the amount and we only did 500. Um, and so we had to stop because for two years consistently there still was not enough being budgeted. Um, plus we ended up in some years that our, our evaluations had gone down. Um, so you, you do have to be mindful of that and be prepared each year to relook at that to see how many you have that's meeting that deductible. Um, the other thing, and we've talked about this, is because you really have to be careful of HIPAA um, and, and a person's uh, medical conditions. Uh, there's, there's a lot of employers that get sued because of talk. You know, somebody finds out something and they share it with their friends or someone else within the office. So we really have to be careful of that. And uh, Melissa has heard this from several people at TAC in this conversation is, hey, don't, don't request an, an EOB. An employer cannot require an employee to submit an EOB, which is an explanation of benefits because it's going to have diagnostic codes on there and it's all sorts of information. So like I said, just be very mindful of that. And that's where it comes in the report that we can give her monthly and that's there's there's nothing there it, it just has the the employee and how much they've paid so that that will help with that um how did but, that get, I'm, you got me confused now uh -huh. how did this talk i mean what is i'm not sure what I, i'm following that what kind of talk are you talking about we're 
We're just talking about numbers, right? Right, but I, I'm just trying to let you know of some of the possible issues that you can run into. Um, because if I, I literally have a county that says they will not reimburse an employee that has this type of situation, that they will not reimburse the employee without the explanation of benefits. Okay, so now you now so we're talking about the HRA. Correct. Right. Thank you. I, I, oh, I, you sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm going. You anyway. Thank you. Now now so, I get what you. Okay. Yeah. So you just have to go about it. You know, with with the purpose of we don't want to be sued. Well, and, and at that point, you're looking at it goes from personnel HR mm -hmm. to audit's office and then to the treasurer's office. Mm -hmm. So you've got three offices that are dealing with But those with are this. just numbers, right? You're just no. passing numbers. In that case, it's just dollar amounts. It it's is all that's amounts. being passed. Right. So like I said, with depending on what y'all require for that employee to be reimbursed, we have to be very we have to caution you and be very careful about it. That's where the the report is going to just getting that report would be very beneficial. Can't say anything about what condition they have, what diagnosis, yeah. right. prognosis, what drugs they're taking, or mm -hmm. anything like that, so that you can. That's. And I think that's. You know, only the government gets to know all that. It's all out online, right? Well, and like I said a while ago, um, I just want you to be aware that if there comes a year that you can't afford to reimburse the employee, there could be some belly aching at that point in time because you may have a new employee that has to meet that full deductible of whatever it may be and they're going to be upset that everyone else got reimbursed through the past three years but come year four that the court says sorry we can't afford to reimburse you anymore so it's it's just but the like old employees would not get of. but the old employees would not get reimbursed anymore going Four years they old. Not. No, they no. just it would just be the deal. Across the board, and it, everybody it's the, the medical climate that we're in where the costs are always skyrocketing. Unfortunately. No thanks. Yeah. Uh, That's what the deal is. <laughs> okay. Well, we got I would just like to see what the actual cost is with the projections as close as we can on option two. Okay. With you, the, yeah. in this packet, you have a list of claims above $10,000. No names, just dollar amounts. It's this page right here. Okay. There's actually two pages. It's in this packet that you have. This tells you the number of employees or uh, subscribers who more than likely met that deductible. And I believe it's a number of <coughs> 62. 62? Correct. So in that, in that object, the county would, if we took option two, it would cost us $62,000. That's what we'd have to reimburse. Only talking about the employee and not reimbursing That's right. a family member. But I took Miss Davenport's advice because she has experienced this as far as budgeting goes. And she recommends budget for half of your employees just to stay out of hot water as far as budgeting process goes. And I think that's great advice. But that's setting up an account and putting it, and putting it over. That's up. correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, we got a lot of homework to do before Tuesday, but speaking strictly for me, I'd like to be able to make a recommendation on Tuesday because after Tuesday is the 22nd, and June only has 30 days, so you only have eight days, and part of that is the weekend, so you only have six days, so. We know it's yeah. coming. Hopefully we'll be able to make a decision. Well, I'm available if anybody wants to talk. Okay. Good deal. All right. Anybody else All right. have anything? Okay. If not, we're going to go ahead and adjourn this workshop.